morning, everybody. When you came in, you got a bulletin. You're going to need that right now. The scriptures we're going to be looking at today are there, as well as a place you can jot down some notes if you want to do that. Man, we're going to miss Dave, aren't we? Oh, man. Dave has been here leading worship for us for 12 years, and uh, I've been here that whole time as well. Dave and I have been together a long, long time. So uh, you can imagine I was sad when he came to me and told me that he, well, he wanted to break up. <laughs> Breaking up is, is hard to do. But uh, anyway, he, uh, he reassured me that it, it was him, not me, and that's why he wanted to, he's going to move on, but it's a great opportunity to see God right in the middle of this whole transition that he and his family are making. Uh, I don't know if you know this, he's been part-time for us while he's gone through seminary and uh, completed that in May, uh, did fantastic, graduated with honors, and so now is going to full-time position at a, a church, growing church up in San Bernardino area. So it's really a very good thing. They're going to love him there. We're going to miss him here, but uh, we really do see the Lord in the middle of that. So we're going to start a new series today called Magnify. Let me pray and we will begin. Father, we thank you for this morning and we just would ask now as we look into your word, which is perfect and living and true, that you would speak to each of our hearts. Father, help us to understand what you want us to understand today. And we commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you know this or not, but you and I were created to magnify God. That's why we were created. Over and over and over and over again in the Bible, it tells us that we are to magnify the Lord. And not just magnify as, you know, in sort of a, a, a religious ritual or service or something like that, something we do, you know, once a week for 20 minutes or something, but that we're to magnify God as a lifestyle. And the interesting thing about it is that magnifying God really inspires and encourages the person who is magnifying him. And, and as we magnify God, we begin to find that changes of our mind and our attitudes and even our emotions begin to occur. I remember um, I was in my first year of seminary, speaking of seminary. As, you know, 1,500 miles away from home and away from all of my friends, I was making some new friends, but I was mostly just very, very busy trying to get through my first semester and was working to pay for it and everything. It was very, very hard. I was just kind of coming to the end of my rope over and over and over again. And we had, uh, at that time, there was a professor there, one of my uh, Bible professors, who had as his brother-in-law Steve Green. You know who Steve Green is? I'm really that old, huh? Well, he's a guy from the 80s, uh, so you can Google him when you get home and probably find some YouTube stuff that uh, he's done. He's a great guy. Grew up as a, as a missionary kid, but became a musician and uh, was just uh, unbelievably great. So our professor said, well, he'll come in and do a concert if you want us to do one. And of course, all the students were excited about the possibility of that. So uh, right by the seminary was this huge old church. We packed that thing out, and a friend of mine went and took a, a couple of friends we knew from, uh, from another school nearby, and it was just, it was great. It was a, a concert about an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. Um, it was mostly just this guy with either his guitar or worship tracks, you know, where they just play the music in the background and he would sing. And afterward, my friend and I, with the friends we had asked along, a couple of, of uh, girls, were going to go have, like, coffee and dessert and stuff, and then they were all going to go home, and I still had to work about four hours, so it was going to be about 3 a.m. before I got home. So we did that. We went and we had our, our coffee after the concert, and uh, I, it, it turns out, while I really wanted to go home and, and to sleep, going to work was exactly what I needed to do. Because as I'm working, I start kind of thinking to myself, uh, why do I feel so good right now? And I was just, I was a custodian at the time, you know, I'm cleaning the buildings and stuff, and I just think, I keep thinking to myself, I just feel really encouraged and really refreshed right now and really just kind of up in my spirit. And I started thinking about the concert, and I realized that in the concert, something had happened that hadn't happened 
for a while. Now understand, I was in Dallas, the Metroplex area. There were at least eight Christian radio stations. Here, I think we have two or three. But there was eight there, and you could hear any kind of Christian music every day as I drove to seminary, and every day as I drove home and went to work, I had on uh, the kind of the, the contemporary Christian radio station. And I had all kinds of Christian songs. But there was something about this music that Steve Green was doing that inspired me and encouraged me. And I thought about it all night long as I worked, and then it hit me as I was kind of wrapping up my work. The big difference between what Steve Green did at that concert and what most Christian music was like is that Steve Green's music focused on God. And most Christian music, contemporary music that you hear on the radio or whatever, focuses on me and my relationship with God. It is what you could say egocentric. Whereas the worship music that Steve Green was doing, really magnifying God, was God-centric, theocentric. And I learned something that night. That when I begin to magnify God in my life, I begin to change on the inside out. And I really discovered this is a missing piece from my life. The Bible talks about it everywhere, but it's not really something that I do. Now, as you look at the word magnify, as we get it out of the Greek New Testament, we're going to see an example of this in a minute. The word is sort of a two-part word. Now, listen to, the, listen to the two parts. You'll recognize the first part, okay? Mega, luno. Mega, luno. Mega is a word we have that's just been transliterated into English. Mega means big or great or large. Mega meal, mega meal, something you should never eat. The mega meal, a jack in the box. You know, it just, it just means big. So when you look at the word megaluno, from which we get the word magnify, it can mean a couple of things. Literally, it can just mean to make something bigger, to expand the size of something. You add on a room to your house, you just, you just magnified it. You megalunoed it. You, you, you know, you, you make something bigger, you, you, you know, add a few inches to the slacks because you're not the man you used to be, you know, kind of expanding yourself, you're megalunoing and your pants need to megaluno with you, you know, it's just, it just means to make big. So figuratively then, the word can mean to give someone great esteem or honor, for them to be very, very big in your mind and in your imagination and in your life, that you're making a lot of room. This is the first thing I want you to write down then. When we talk about magnifying in this sense, the way we're using it, I'm just going to make it very sort of contemporary vernacular here. What it really means when I magnify is it means to make a big deal about God. To make a big deal deal about God. It means putting God in a big place front and center in my life. Which of course means that God now is going to displace other things that have been front and center in my life. You obviously see that it's something I have to do. It doesn't just happen. Sometimes it can almost be sort of a passive thing like like my experience at that concert where somebody else was just making a big deal out of God. And as I sat there listening to this, it began to displace all of my weariness and my frustration and my concerns about am I going to graduate and all this stuff. And suddenly God started taking the front seat of my life, if I can put it that way. And all this other stuff began to be kind of pushed out, making a big deal about God. Now, one of the primary places this occurs, I'm going to read a few verses here, is in a portion of scripture in Luke 1, where Mary, the mother of Jesus, is pregnant with Jesus. She goes to her cousin Elizabeth, who is going to give birth to a child that they'll name John, that maybe you know is John the Baptist. I don't know if you knew Jesus and John the Baptist were actually like second cousins. And as Mary gets to Elizabeth... Elizabeth feels kind of overwhelmed with the presence of God. And she says, in effect, 
When you came, the child within me leapt for joy. Something big is going on. Something is happening here that God is doing. And then she focuses on Mary and says, in effect, your faith is bringing this to pass. Because you're open to God, this is happening. And Mary goes into what theologians have called the Magnificat which is the Latin word for magnify and is the first word of this praise statement that Mary makes, which is why they call it the Magnificat. Now look at it up on the screen. Let's just uh, read a little bit of this. This is very long. I'm just going to give you a few verses. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. She's making a big deal about God. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of of his servant. Now, if you look at those verses, you're going to see a literary technique going on known as Hebrew parallelisms. In other words, Mary is saying, I magnify the Lord, here's one side, and my soul you know, rejoices in God. And what's going on is she's saying, in effect, Here's one side that balances and mirrors this side. In other words, she's saying, because my soul magnifies God, I'm filled with rejoicing. And because God has helped me find rejoicing in what he's doing, it makes me make a bigger deal about God. You see how those two work in balance? God is doing something here, and that want, makes me want to make a big deal about God. But part of it is because she already started making a big deal about God in her life. ...as God began to work, now her soul is filled with joy. Magnifying God has displaced other stuff and filled her with a sense of joy. It's changing her on the inside out. Now she goes on to say why she's magnifying. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. You know, that's true. That's true. We'll hit Advent in a handful of weeks from now... ...and we'll read story after story about this little peasant girl from a nowhere backwater village in, in Israel that lived 2,000 years ago. But you and I know her to this day. We know aspects about her. And so does most of the civilized world. A little peasant girl. But because her heart was open to God, because she already kind of lived with, with a heart that made room for God. God worked in her in such a way and God began to use her and did use her in such a way that when she says, you know, every generation is going to say, wow, Mary was really blessed by God. And she's right about that. She's totally right about that. For he, talking about God, who is mighty, has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Now, there's a lot more that she's going to say after that. But it's important for us to understand these two aspects. Magnifying just means to make a big deal about God. But as I do that, God begins to change me. When I really start to put God front and center, I mean really do, and begin to look at God for who he is, something begins to happen. Changes begin to occur. Now there's a lot of things that happen, but I want to give you three things right now. Three changes that occur when I magnify God. These things you will notice over the course of time. One of them you'll notice immediately, the first one I want to give you. The first thing that changes when I magnify God, I notice, is that my stress level begins to change. Now, who would like their stress level to begin to change right now? Every parent, just go ahead and lift that hand. Yeah. When I begin to magnify God, the interesting thing is as he starts displacing all of my worry, I start seeing things in the right perspective. Why do I stress out and get worried? Because I'm unbalanced in how I'm viewing things. That's why I stress out. Something happens and all I can focus on is something that happens and it just seems to skew everything else. When I begin to magnify God, now things start getting back in the right perspective. And suddenly I see God for who he is and my problems begin to diminish in how much I'm worrying about them. As I magnify God, my stress level begins to change. In fact, I have noticed... And so have apparently a lot of people. I've been reading a lot about this this week. That if I will just do that one thing, you know, a problem hits and you're worried and you don't know what to do. Everybody here has felt stress 
and even anguish and maybe even despair. Everybody here knows what it is to suffer internally or externally, to feel just down, to feel depressed, to feel hopeless even. But the testimony is constantly, from generation to generation, people have written about this, that instead of trying to fix my problem, if I'll just begin to magnify God, I'll just let God have his place. I'll just begin to focus on him. Suddenly, he begins to give me peace in my heart. And can begin to go to work, even in what that problem is. My stress level begins to change. The second thing that begins to change when I magnify God is my values begin to change. As I start seeing God for who he is, suddenly things that seemed very important don't seem as important. I mean, if you think about it, what do you have in the world that has more value than God himself? Nothing. Nothing. The other thing that's interesting about this is sometimes things that seem pretty important when you begin to magnify God become extremely important. And that typically is relationships that we have. Sometimes those relationships that are important, as I begin to magnify God, God really starts showing me the value and importance of a relationship that he has uh, put me into. Sometimes it would be kids or spouse or friends or neighbors. I mean, it's, just, it's all kinds of things. But my values are always going to be changed when I start to magnify God. Third thing is this. My passions begin to change when I magnify God. My passions are just those things that motivate me. Where other things that are kind of temporary used to motivate me. Not that those things become bad, not at all. But it is that now God puts things in my heart that motivate me even more. Things that are eternal. Things that make a difference. I just find my passions and things that I care about starting to change. And I want to invest myself in those things. Now I want to show you a, a verse real quick that kind of ties all this together. Philippians 4 says this. This is Paul. Don't worry about anything. How you like that? Amen. Let's go home. Don't worry about anything. It's, gonna be, it's all good. It's okay. No sweat. Don't worry about anything. You know what he's going to tell you to do? Don't worry about anything. In other words, don't focus and center on problems because it always breaks you down. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. The word you could put there, magnify the Lord. Just begin to let God be big among you. Then he gives a, the uh, result. Gives a result. Listen to this. When I begin to do this. He says, then you will experience God's peace. Now notice he doesn't say, then all your problems are going to go away. Then all of the answers you need to your issues are going to come flooding into you. He just says, then you'll experience God's peace. Why is that? Because God's big now. And everything else begins to come into a proper and accurate balance of what it really is in your life. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So how do I do it? How do I make much of Jesus in my life? How do I make a big deal about God? How do I, how do I magnify him? What are some things I can do? Let me give you four very quickly. The first one is pretty obvious. I have to make space for God in my life. We all too often put God in those kind of empty moments throughout the course of a week, month, or year. But if I'm not willing to really make some space for God then I'm never going to be able to step into this lifestyle. Now, for, for some of us, making an hour time on a Sunday morning is all you can do right now. And that's great. That's great. That's a wonderful step in a right direction. I remember when I first started kind of attending, it was the highlight of my week because I could be with other people who felt the same way I felt, who were learning the things I was learning, and I just would sit there and absorb it all in. Hallelujah for that. But as I move beyond that, I have to discover ways that I can make space 
for God. Now, sometimes this might look like spending some time in a, in a morning or an evening just reading a few verses out of the Bible. It might look like prayer. It might look like meeting somebody uh, once a week for, for an hour over coffee and just kind of talking about the Lord. There are a million ways I can do this. But one thing is sure, I have to be intentional. If I'm not intentional, all the other activities of life, all the other business, all the other issues I'm facing, all the other troubles will really begin to just push God out of my life. I have to concentrate and I have to intentionally make space for God. The second one is this. This is what Mary did. I have to remember God's care for me. She simply looked at how God had worked in her life. And as she did, she found joy in that. She found happiness and excitement and care from God. And as that happened in her, she began to make a bigger and bigger and bigger deal about God. And in fact, if you read about her life, and, and again, we'll look at some of it during the, the Christmas season, the Advent season, you'll see that this is a, this is a, a young girl, it's a teenage girl, maybe 14 years old, who grows into this magnificent woman of God. Because she has just constantly practiced a lifestyle of keeping God right in the front of her life. So I have to remember God's care. Now, you know, I think for some of us, we don't really have a lot of experience with God. And so we, we, we kind of look at that and say, well, I don't know how God has really cared for me. You know, the way we, they used to say, to count your blessings. Well, I just am not sure. We just can't kind of grab hold of how that might happen. So another good place sort of to start is what I would just say, just get to know God. Just get to know God. By that, I mean just open a Bible, get a, a devotional book, talk to somebody, again, meeting with somebody who you feel like has a, a, a good, strong understanding and faith in the Lord, and just allow yourself to get to know things about God. What is God like? Is he, is he good? Is he not so good? Does he care? Does he not care? Is he really as powerful as, as you know, people say? Does you know, Pastor Kevin have a clue what he's talking about on Sunday morning? You know, I want to get to know for myself. So I just start to get to know God. And I will tell you, that might be a good starting place, but as you begin to magnify God, that becomes the full journey, getting to know God. Not one moment will go by in your life where you're really centering God that you won't see something new and fresh about God. You just go, man, that's amazing. And it makes sense, doesn't it? If God is eternal, then I really can't ever get to know him perfectly, can I? But God in his grace shows us a lot of things about him. So I need to get to know God. And here's, here's the fourth one. Mary does this. Paul talks about this. My wife and I were talking about how we've learned to do this in our lives. And it's this. I just simply need to tell God thank you. Just tell him thank you. As I see how God has worked in my life, I just say, God, I see that you did that. Even maybe in spite of being in a sea of problems, Lord, I see this thing that you did. I just want to say thank you. You know, you're here today. You're healthy enough to be here today. Thank you, God. You, you probably had breakfast this morning. Maybe a cup of coffee. Maybe six or seven. You know, I don't know. Thank you, God. You, you, you go home to a place, you might have a place that, that you call your own where you'll lay down tonight. That's, that's better than a lot of the world. Thank you, God. You have people in your life who love you. Thank you, God. You get up tomorrow, you have something you're going to do, something you enjoy. Thank you, God. And you begin to look beyond that, kind of like the song that Mike sang. I, I begin to see what, what God has really done, this expansive kind of plan that he has, that right in the center of it is a cross, where he in the flesh hung for me. Thank you, God. A major part of magnifying God is just learning to tell him thank you. Now, I want to pray and let you guys go. But over the next five weeks, we're going to look at five amazing things about God. We're just going to pull out aspects. We're going to kind of get to know God a little bit together. And as we do, we're going to look at how each of those amazing things about God, if I will really make a big deal of that in my life, how that will transform me and change me. So let's, uh, let's pray together, and then I'm going to let you guys go. Father, we thank you for this morning. We just praise you, Lord, for your goodness. We praise you for the encouragements that you give us. We praise you for the blessings in our lives. And Lord, you know sometimes within our minds and our hearts, it gets very dark and it's hard to see anything except the troubles that we're facing. But Lord, we, we understand 
your love for us is really there. As we start to focus on that, we start to trust you and, and really just learn how to make a big deal of you in our lives, you begin to go to work in amazing ways. So I just, I just pray for everyone who's here today, Father, and just pray this week as they kind of take a moment here and there to focus on you, that you would speak to them, that you would encourage them. Father, I also pray that you would flood us this week with things that you've done, that we would be able to really reflect and remember all of the great things you've done in our lives, and that like Mary so long ago, that would help us really begin to magnify you in, in right ways and in life-changing ways. Father, we love you and we thank you for this day. We just thank you for the blessing you've put in our lives, and, and we thank you for Jesus who made all of this possible. I just pray now, Lord, your great grace and blessing to go with everybody who's here today. I pray that you would bless them with your encouragement and with hope and with all that they need for this week, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for this day. We commit it all to you now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day today. We'll see you next week.